Hey YouTubers, this is Dr. Chris with Dread Central's YouTube page. Coming back in 2017, we took a bit of a break for the holiday season. Hope you caught our last video, Krampus. And now we're returning with more with more creatures and horror from the screen to the comic books. And I thought since Underworld, Blood Wars, comes out this week in theaters, we talk a little bit about some vampire comic books, which we did briefly in our Tomb of Dracula video, if you remember. I'm not going to go over... Every single vampire comic book out there. There are a lot of them. Lots of them. What I'm going to do is highlight some that I read that I thought I would pass on to you guys to check out. First of all, I want to talk about American Vampire by Scott Snyder. Scott Snyder is hot off of his run of Batman from the New 52. And he's started out writing American Vampire with his artist at Raphael... Albuquerque. It's the story of a gunslinger named Skinner Sweet in the Old West who's turned into a vampire. And we flash forward to the flapper era of Hollywood, the 1910s, the 1920s, the Rolling Twenties, as it was called. And he meets a young girl and has pity on her after she's left for dead in the Mojave Desert outside of. Uh, after she's left for dead in the desert and turns her into a vampire. Now, what's unique about American vampires is that they can only be killed by gold. Think about that now, because the American gold rush happened. So, uh, Scott Snyder does a good job of changing the vampire mythos in very unique ways. Next up, we have Crimson. Crimson is the story of a young teenager named Alex, and him and his friends are brutally murdered one night, but Alex is left uh, almost alive and found by an ancient man named Ezekiel or Eskimo, I forget which the name is, but he lives in a church and he brings Alex back with him and re re basically kind of like rejuvenates him, but he's already being turned into a vampire. So he goes on all sorts of weird adventures with his Native American Indian vampire friend and a vampire hunter named Scarlet. And he finds out that the head vampire in the city his dad is working for and there's dragons. And the book is done by Herberto Ramos, who's currently working on Champions for Marvel Comics. So definitely check that out. They all just recently got reprinted, which is fantastic because these books have been out of print for years until Herberto Ramos' rise of star power over an amazing Spider-Man, and now he's on Champions after leaving his X-Men title. Definitely check that comic book out. Then we have Girl Fiend, which is the story of a couple dealing with uh, the vampirism of the girl in question, the Girl Fiend, and it's done by the Panda Brothers, a black and white comic book self-contained graphic novel by Dark Horse, which is bloody violent and so much fun to read. You may have mentioned, you may have seen in one of my other videos that we talked a lot about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Those comic books are really a lot of fun to check out. And then we have Steve Niles and Ben Temple Smith's 30 Days a Night. This is the comic book series, by the way, that launched IDW as a company. And now they publish Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Lock and Key, and so many more other great comic books currently on the market today. 30 Days a Night is about a bunch of vampires that come to Burrow, Alaska, which suffers actually in reality 60 days a night, not 30 days a night. And they way lace, way lace, lay waste to the town. It's followed up by a sequel, Dark Days, which was also made into a movie just like 30 Days a Night. I don't recommend watching Dark Days, but definitely check out the film 30 Days a Night, starring uh, Penny Dreadful's Josh Hartnett. There's been uh, several other sequels of 30 Days a Night, including they had a crossover with the X-Files, where Mulder and Scully go to investigate the events of what happened in the original graphic novel. And then there's I, Vampire, which is character that has been around for several decades over in DC Comics, and he was part of the New 52 until his book was cancelled. His name is Andrew Bennett, and he had this very aristocratic Dracula kind of look, and they revamped him to this more Twilight pretty boy kind of setting. Uh, he had a crossover with the Justice League Dark, which we will get to in February. The series unfortunately ended after 19 issues, and we haven't seen him since then, but we're hoping that maybe DC Comics will bring him back one day. And speaking of more adulting comics, check out Vamps and Hollywood Vamps, a group of biker gang vampire girls go all over Hollywood just sucking the place dry. It is a no... It is a no-joke, balls-to-the-wall, hardcore, adult-themed vampire comic book you can only get from Vertigo Comic Books. Thanks, everybody. Don't forget to check out Dread Central's Patreon and check out the other ways that you can help save Dread Central. We need all the support we can get here at Dread Central. Check out the other great videos here on the YouTube page as well as all of our content on DreadCentral.com. Thank you, everybody, and have a good night.